today we are going to make some grass. No, I'm not in Colorado, so it's not going to be that kind of grass. It's our techniques that are so simple and sensible, your mowers have practically built them themselves. <laughs> Hello folks, it's Mad Dog Merv. Welcome to today's show. Today, I'm on my way to do some investigating. There's some places I wanna go see, and they have to do with a visit in 1875 of the President of the United States to Salt Lake City, the first time a US President had come to Salt Lake City. And that President was none other than Ulysses S. Grant. So, he came to Salt Lake City and visited. I found that uh, that in and of itself was kind of interesting. But then the tie-in that I ran into a piece on, uh, while I was doing some family history, that talked about President Grant visiting. That was kind of interesting. And of course, this all has to do with railroad history. So, that's really interesting to me. So today, Mad Dog Merv is going to take a look at the 1875 visit of U.S. Grant, President Grant, to Salt Lake City. Stick around. So let's talk a little bit about the visit of President Grant to Salt Lake City the first weekend of October in 1875. It was an auspicious event. It was greatly, it helped greatly correct his views and created quite a revulsion in his mind favorable to the Mormon people. The presidential party consisted of the President and Mrs. Grant, Colonel Fred Grant and wife, General O. E. Babcock, ex-secretary of the Navy of the Navy, Adolf E. Borey, wife and daughter, and Governor Thayer of Wyoming. A committee of ten, headed by Governor Emery, started for Ogden on the early train and taking the Union Pacific eastbound passenger train met the presidential train at Preston Station in Weber and returned with it. On board were President Brigham Young, the Honorable John Taylor, Honorable uh, Brigham Young Jr., Honorable Joseph F. Smith, Judge Elias Smith, the Honorable F. M. Lyman, H. B. Clausen, Esquire, Colonel F. Little, several ladies and representatives of the press. The engine of the special train was decorated with flags and bunting, left the station about 9.30 that morning, and it took about an hour and a half to get to Ogden. The presidential train immediately switched to the Utah Central track, and the presidential cars were attached in front of those of the Utah Central, and drawn by the Utah Central's engine. The train started out of Ogden at a fairly good speed, making the trip to Salt Lake City in about an hour and 15 minutes. As the train was leaving Ogden, President Brigham Young stepped out of the Utah Central car and upon the platform to where the President was standing and was presented to President Grant by Mr. George Q. Cannon, both gentlemen uncovering. President Young said, President Grant, this is the first time I have seen a President in my country. President Grant nodded and after a few inquiries and compliments, President Young was conducted to the interior of the car and presented to Mrs. Grant and the rest of the party. Mrs. Grant entered into a familiar conversation with President Young, which was prolonged for about half an hour when President Young took his leave of the ladies and of President Grant saying a few words to the President as he passed and returned to the Utah Central train cars. During the entire trip from Ogden to the city, President Grant occupied the platform of his car with Governor Emery and delegate George Q. Cannon, the latter being kept engaged in conversation by the President in regard to the various points of interest in the territory. So now we're going to take a little look at the station in Salt Lake City. This was on Block 83, which is between North and South Temple, and between what is now 4th and 5th West in Salt Lake City. This was the terminus of the Utah Central Railroad at that time. And keep in mind this is a block south and west of where West High School sits today. Pretty, pretty neat. This is uh, where the Gateway currently sits, Gateway uh, Mall. Real quick, going back to this picture of this uh, Utah Central locomotive, I believe it was taken right here. The far right corner of this picture, you'll see um, a little 
building and I believe that's where it was taken. So looking at it today, so looking at it today, here's an aerial view of the gateway in this whole area. Circled off on the right is the Devereux house and right there in the middle is the um, gateway, uh, what we call the gateway. And I have superimposed kind of the, the Y, the uh, train station and the engine house over. You can kind of see where, where they actually were. Now, a site investigation today, uh, you can see this is where the train station would have been, and uh, these are some of the buildings there at the gateway. And looking from the other side of the property, uh, that building kind of in the middle there would be where that, uh, that train station was. Now, over the years, a lot of changes have gone on here, uh, most notably is, is the gateway. The viaduct is where North Temple is, and this is the corner area of the property where the railroad tracks would have led off and uh, gone into the uh, north here uh, towards Ogden. From the train station, the president and his party were conveyed in carriages up to East Temple Street, we know it as Main Street, and over to the Walker House Hotel. Now the Walker House Hotel, this picture from 1875 is as close as we get to how it looked when President Grant was there. It was built in 1872 and actually stood until oh, nearly the 20th century when it was finally demolished. It is said that the streets were lined with thousands of people including many Sunday school children waving at the President. And here from our 3D map in 1870, you can see the little red square. That's where the Walker House Hotel was built. Again, this map is from 1870, so this is just previous to when that was built. But between 2nd South and 3rd South on the west side of the street, it was like 246 uh, South Main was the address. The president spent the rest of Sunday in his hotel. Early Monday morning, the president in an open buggy with Governor Emery was driven to the Temple Block. When he went into the tabernacle and looked at the foundation walls of the Temple, you can see on the left hand side of our map here from 1870 the foundation of the Temple and the Temple Square area. Next, he went to the North Bench where he obtained a fine view of the city. Their next stop was to Camp Douglas. There he examined the new stone barracks and officers' quarters that had just been built. They were waited upon by the officers of the post. The other members of the presidential party also visited the Temple Block and Camp Douglas. It was at the special request of the president that no salute was fired at the military post in his honor, also that the band did not come out. He said his visit was strictly a social and sightseeing one and was not in the least of an official character. After spending a brief time in Camp Douglas, the governor drove the president a short distance up Emigration Canyon before returning to the city and his hotel where a public reception was held. There several hundred citizens, ladies and gentlemen, were presented to the president. The reception continued till after two o'clock when the public were excluded and the federal officials in a body were presented to the president. One account said that the presidential party partook of an early dinner at the Walker House and then proceeded to the depot. On the way to the depot, the president and company called at the residence of the Honorable William Jennings, where he met a few prominent citizens. Another account says that this is where he had his dinner and a small reception. Here on a map it shows where the Devereux House is. They're on the block 84 just east of the train depot and not too far away from the hotel so it makes sense that this is the place he would stop. It was a place used for entertaining and it is on the record of the Devereux House that this is where he stopped for a short reception. Among the prominent citizens that were introduced to the president at this reception was my great-great-grandfather, Francis James Polkinghorn Pasco, a man who was introduced to the president as the most congenial and progressive in the territory. A man who was friend to Colonel Patrick Connor, the first base commander at Fort Douglas, who made Salt Lake City his home afterwards, as well as a very good friend of William Jennings. Now there is a family history account 
that claims that this reception took place at the Pasco Mansion, which was on 200 West and 200 North in Salt Lake City. However, there is too much compelling evidence that this reception was at the Devereaux House, and unfortunately, the relative who put this information together, well, they didn't. Uh, they didn't put down their sources. There's no way to verify this. And so we are sure that this reception took place at the Jennings home, the Devereaux Mansion. Upon arriving at the depot, the special car in which Grant traveled was found profusely decorated with flowers and green, the artistic work of a number of the ladies of the city. As the train was moving off, the president, who stood upon the car platform, was heartily cheered by the crowd assembled at the depot, and he acknowledged the salute by waving his hat. He was escorted to Ogden by the City Council Committee of Welcome, the Courthouse Committee, and several invited guests, prominent ladies and gentlemen of the city. After leaving the station, the President talked freely, expressing himself as having been highly pleased with the appearance of Salt Lake City and delighted with the reception they had received. One incident of note happened on the way into the city as President Grant was entering. His carriage passed a multitude of Sunday school children who, under their teacher, had gathered uh, in an array of white to welcome him. In their simplicity of manner, emphasizing the greetings of Brigham Young, this is the first time I have had the honor of meeting a president in my nation. He turned to Governor Emery and inquired, Whose children are these? Why, he answered, They're Mormon children. For several moments the president was silent, and then he mumbled in a tone of self-reproach. I have been deceived. It was in vain for any anti-Mormon after that utterance to tell him that those children had been arrayed just for the purpose of making a favorable impression. To President Grant, a man so strong of a religious nature, these Sunday school children brought up in the fear of the Lord were on this Sabbath day of his entrance into the city more powerful a sermon than he had ever heard in the Metropolitan Methodist Church from the charmed tongue of his favorite pastor. Most of this narrative has come from a book, The History of Salt Lake City. Thanks for joining us, folks.